How's it going, YouTube? Today we're going to be doing another oversimplified video since y'all seem to enjoy that, and I was recommended by the chat to watch The Pig War. I'm hoping that it's a war with pigs similar to how the emu wars were, but I don't know of that war, so since I haven't heard about it, I feel like that's not going to be the case, but we're going to find out. But yeah, leave any recommendations down below and uh, let's get into it. This video was made possible by NordVPN. Click the link below to stay safe online and get a huge discount off a two-year plan with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Trouble sleeping? Need no. someone to snuggle? No. Then why not snuggle? Me! The limited edition oversimplified oh, plushie is he's starting with an ad. Oh, <gasps> oh my god, only. that's adorable. Get a click along with some beautiful new character pins. Look at us, boys. We've only gone and bloody done it. That's Jefferson, right? And secured independence. Now to expand westward and conquer the rest of the continent. Uh, Wait, that's... When is this taking place? I'm sorry to pause it so early, but if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, but before Thomas Jefferson became president, wasn't he against the idea of the president having power to push westward? It wasn't until he became president and he was offered... Like the deal of a lifetime of the Louisiana Purchase that he realized that, no, I think my beliefs were wrong. And he decided to then expand the United States more westward. But I don't think before he was president, he wasn't very gung ho about just pushing the boundary with the federal powers. I could be wrong, but correct me if I'm not. Thomas, it looks like a bunch of different people already live out west. What? <gasps> oh, no means we can't expand Aww. i hate my life whoa 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 i didn't say they were white people oh thank god oh thank god at the end of the revolutionary war when the united states secured its independence from great britain the two sides met in paris to settle the terms among various things was it in verse oh, it, no wait that's versailles different the granted them a generous amount of land out west however Benjamin Franklin appeared to have an additional fascination. Oh, Canada, so voluptuous. You think we can maybe oh, come on. some of that? Quit ogling our territory. But look at those curves. I'd worry less about Canada's curves and more about your own curves, Benjamin. Oh! Many in America suggested that one day, the Canadian colonies should become a part of the United States. In response, Britain suggested that many in America should shut the hell up. That's well, fair. If Britain wasn't going to give up Canada, then the two sides had to agree on where to put their border. Easy enough for the most part. Follow yeah. some existing borders, add in a few rivers and lakes, maybe even a parallel for good measure. Yeah. But then there was a question. What would happen here? Mm -hmm. Straight line? Straight line. And yep. so it was. The border would go from the northwesternmost point of this perfectly oval-shaped lake and continue in a straight line westward until it met the Mississippi River. You, you can always tell when borders were created artificially and just by people in a meeting room trying to figure out how they're going to divide up land because borders naturally do not form straight. That's why when you look at Europe, all of the borders for the most part in Europe are very jaggedy and rigged and all over the place. But if you go to like the Middle East or parts of Africa where there was colonialization, you'll see a lot of straight lines because there were just, you know, France, Britain, Spain, whoever else were just saying, you know what, you'll take this one. I'll take this one. Just draw a straight line here. That's yours. This is mine. Just it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter if we're dividing up different, you know, cultures, different ethnic groups, different religious groups. It doesn't matter. This lands for us. Same thing with parts out west in the United States of America because there isn't very many geographical locations and they were, if I'm not mistaken, creating states to kind of delay the inevitable of a type of, not, not the Civil War necessarily because they didn't know that would necessarily happen, but delaying the effects of North versus South in terms of their opinions on freer slave states. So they just made states that were very straight lines. Perfect. Or was it? Well, as it turned out, the lake didn't actually look like this, but like this. And the <gasps> Mississippi wasn't here, but here. <gasps> so in the end, none of that made even the slightest bit of sense. Don't blame the Founding Fathers. They were just using the best map available. Blame the guy who made it. But to the minds of the day, the issue had been solved. And it was finally time to start getting along. Oh, <laughs> back to war they go. The Glorious War of 1812 saw the Americans try to invade Canada and the British I forgot down the White that House. we did this. But when all was said and done, 
it was pretty much a draw. And once again, America and Britain Yeah, border agreements are crazy. By now, both sides realized the original border they came up with was a piece of hot garbage. And since America had also <laughs> they recently deserved a it. huge amount of land from Napoleon, they decided they would need to re-examine the border issue. Straight line? Straight line? Straight line. And so it was. To fix the problems of the previous border agreement, they decided to go from the northwesternmost point of this lake, as had been previously agreed, down to the 49th parallel, and from there the line Makes would go sense. straight as an arrow up until the Rocky Mountains. But beyond the Rockies, the two sides couldn't quite agree on where it would go next, because both sides claimed the territory beyond the Rockies was theirs. Uh-oh. See, Throughout its early history, America as a nation had its eyes heavily fixated on all that juicy land out west. I mean, I mean, like, look at it. Can, you can't tell me. You cannot tell me that this completed ish shape just doesn't work for you. Like, look at how beautiful this is. Like, it, I know we know it now, but can you imagine if it kind of looked like this? Instead, I would, that wouldn't look nearly as good. Like, that just, it doesn't look right. I'm glad we, I'm glad we have the borders that we have now from an aesthetic perspective. West, ripe for invasion. I mean, settlementation. America wanted to expand. Not Ooh. only was it their right, some believed it was a He's got a penis for Florida. By God himself, to multiply and spread across the continent, like rats. Or disease. Okay, guys, just before we take over everything, God definitely Way oversimplified described how right. the War of 18 will start, but also not very relevant to the story at hand. And Fair. who was it who spoke to God? It was Billy, right? I thought it was Sharon's cat. I hear voices all the time. Well, it was one of us. There's no way we made this whole thing up to justify our ruthless collective imperialist tendencies. Yeah! <laughs> all right. Well, in that case, let's get out there and make the world a better place, just as God intended. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh my god, McDonald's! <laughs> this belief in divine That's an accurate representation. Would later be given its very own name, Manifest Destiny. But America wasn't the only one interested in controlling the Western territories. At the time, Canada was made up of a number of colonies collectively referred to as British North America. Eh. This one over here was owned by the Hudson's Bay Company, a British charter company dedicated oh my to God, the as beavers. beavers as possible into as many felt hats as possible as quickly as possible. And the indigenous people became a key supplier. As a result, did we ever almost make the beaver <laughs> endangered or extinct through all that? Because we almost did that with the buffalo. Right? What did we ever run the risk of <laughs> of just oh no, there goes all the beavers because we turned them all into hats. The British were also eager to control the land out eager west. Eager beaver. And secure that region now the beavers were fine. It's a rat. The Great Columbia River was deemed vital to the beaver business. So when it came to the question of what would happen to the border beyond the Rockies, the conversation went a little like this. The line should keep going straight because we're manifestly destined to gain. I mean, look at how aesthetically pleasing that straight line is. It's so good. In the entire North American continent. No, we need this river so we can keep scalping beavers. Look, why don't we just draw the border along the river? That way we both have access to it. Well, that would be a completely fair compromise that protects the interests of both parties. Yeah, but fuck and that. There's no way I'm ever going to agree to it. Hell yeah. Having come to a roadblock, both sides simply agreed that for now, they would jointly occupy the Northwestern Territory. They were both free to settle and trade there. But rest assured, the agreement that never was works. Temporary. Eventually, somebody would get their way. Listen, Yank, we can jointly occupy this land, but I ain't sharing anything else. I don't want to see you using my toothbrush. Ew. I don't want to catch you wearing my underwear. And Ew. I don't want to catch you using my computer and selling my data to advertisers. Oh, here it comes. Well, then you, my friend, should use NordVPN. <laughs> I like how he always like strips. Your passwords to your most important online accounts. That is a Discord kitten. Me neither. And that's why I use NordVPN. <laughs> NordVPN has thousands of secure servers in over 60 countries, allowing you to safely surf the net huh? at the fastest speed possible. It works let's invade Mexico? Devices, so you're protected on the go. I mean, I'm for it. Let's just, let's invade Mexico and, and Canada. I want to take both. Just the click of a button, we should control all of North America. It's our God-given right as Americans. With NordVPN, you no longer need to worry about those shady websites, annoying pop-ups, or undesired eyes. Hey, I am Mexican. 
Well, well wouldn't you rather be American if we invaded? Think about it. Think about it. You can get to pay for health care. Don't invade the rave cave. It's a sovereign nation. And as always, you'll be supporting my channel. So thank you. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. Bickering over boundaries, manifesting destiny, and a joint occupation of Oregon. And one man living here who felt the territory should be British was Why is it called Douglas, Fort the Vancouver Bay Company's no nonsense chief factor at Fort Vancouver. Ah, what a beautiful, unspoiled corner of the British Empire. I've got my spotted dick, my Spice Girls fan club membership, and an unrelenting negative outlook on life that affects everyone around me. What are you looking at, Stephen? Yes. Aww. Truly British. What the? Oh, sh yep, there we are. Damn straight we brought the McDonald's. The problem for men like Douglas was that many Americans had already begun streaming up the Oregon Trail. Gun slinging, howdy neighboring, and diarrhea having. By the thousands, they were pouring into the Oregon Territory in search of land to settle and farm. This, however, crowded out the fur trade, and eventually, a very bitter Douglas and the other Hudson's Bay traders at Fort Vancouver were ordered to relocate north to a new base of operations. But the Americans keep coming and they don't stop coming. And they won't stop the coming until they hit the ground running. running. Didn't make sense to keep sharing Oregon when they outnumbered the Brits more than six to one. And oh, suddenly, shit. the whole joint occupation deal was being called into question. Newly elected President Polk maintained that America had an obvious claim to the entire region, even implying a possible war with Britain. Fiery language from U.S. Senators declared that American rifles would annihilate the Hudson's Bay Company in Oregon, and America even gave Britain notice that it was pulling out of the Joint Occupation <gasps> Agreement. The British were alarmed as the two sides stood on the brink of- Dude, okay, I have an honest question for my British viewers. Agreement. The British- Do you drink your tea out of teacups? A lot of the time? Like, I know that they used to. Do you still do that? I've never had, even when I have, like, hot tea, I never drink from a teacup. I drink from, like, a, a mug or a smaller mug, but it's never been a teacup. Mugs mostly? Okay. All right. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. We, we, we've evolved past the teacups. We're alarmed as the two sides stood on the brink of war. But in the end, neither truly wanted a fight. The British favored maintaining good economic relations, while the Americans had already gotten themselves into a war with Mexico. So See, it's happening. Back and forth, the British finally said, fine, you wanted a straight line? There, there's your straight line. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! And so, the was made. The border would continue directly to the Strait of Georgia, but because the British insisted they keep Vancouver Island, it would then move south through the center of the channel and on to the Pacific Ocean. Finally, the issue of the Northwest border. Okay, I'm gonna make a guess here. Because I've heard of this type of issue before. I'm gonna guess that either one, they fight over the 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 parts of the river. Like, oh, what does it mean by straight? The because I've watched a CGP gray video about something similar around New York, I think, where oh, but but what's the center? There's tiny little islands. Does it go this way? Does it go the other way? Or they, they fight over parts of the river. Like, oh, what do you mean the center? It breaks in different areas. What's it going to be? Hmm? So uh, there's going to be either some islands or there's going to be different channels that it can go through that cause disputes. Let's see which one, if I'm right. Had been solved. H hold the phone. Discrepancy detected. Enhanced frame, 200%. Enhance? Oh, there it is. Yep, there it is. Enhance. Oh, too far. Perfect. Now, show me the exact wording of the treaty. The line of boundary goes to the middle of the channel, and thence southerly through the middle of said channel. But there's, there's some islands. Of channels. Yep, there it is. Yep. So you tell me, dear viewer, which channel is the treaty referring to? I would assume... I would assume that the one that it would refer to, if I was going to be an impartial person, it would be this one. Just because that's the center, right? So if I had to pick, like, why would I be like, oh, you get all of them or you get all of them, just go down the middle, right? Wouldn't that make the most sense? But let me guess, they're going to argue because everybody wants more. So you tell me, dear viewer, which channel is the treaty referring to? And therefore, who owns these islands? Is the wording of the treaty maybe a little too vague? Well, that's exactly the problem encountered by the people living in the area. 
The British insisted that the channel intended by the treaty was the Rosario Strait, and therefore the islands were British. The Americans, on the other hand, argued that the intended channel was the Harrow Strait, and therefore the islands were American. Just split the At difference. Times, the debate became rather heated. Even the individuals who negotiated and signed the treaty at times didn't seem entirely sure which channel the treaty meant, and representatives from the Hudson's Bay Company begged them to make it clearer. But thousands of miles away, the people in power simply had more to worry about than some tiny islands in the middle of nowhere. Order! Order! He looks so pissed. All right, listen up, we got a lot to get through. The seventh Earl of Chisingham says he encountered a foul beast in the fields of Upper Fartingdom late last night Is... and put this sketch together? That, Are those that's real? That's a poor person, Darren. Ugh. Next, Lord Piddlingham says he has a new mole on his backside. How is that parliamentary business, George? Oh, some islands in the Pacific Northwest are in dispute and could lead to a war with America? Boring. Welcome to British politics, Fine. they're always Let's pissed. Take a look yeah. At that mole, George. <gasps> Whoa, yes! Strip, 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 strip. And so, for now, the islands were simply held in dispute. Were they British or were they American? I'm sure this conflict won't cause anyone to die. And one man who thought the islands were on the British Parliament always British being pissed, was yeah. James Douglas, now the governor of Vancouver Island. He had already once had American settlers encroach on his territory and force him to move. And by golly, he wasn't going to let it happen again. As far as he was concerned, those islands were not only British, but prime agricultural land. And given the chance, those glubby Yanks wouldn't hesitate to start damn Yankee with their glubby little hands. And so, he came up with a plan. If the British settled the islands first, then that would surely secure them for Britain. And so in 1853, that sounds like war talk. An Irishman by the name of Charles Griffin, along with some Hawaiian shepherds, to go set up a sheep farm on San Juan Island. And set up a sheep farm, they did. The place was rammed with sheep, 1,369 to be exact. But within those flocks of woolly cowards could also be found a number of beautiful, prized Berkshire pigs. That's a good oh, pig. Porky, you look stunning. You Is this, isn't that the same type of pig or pig art style from Gravity Falls or am I crazy? This pig looks very familiar to me. You're the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Would you perhaps? like to go to the island ball together tonight oink once for no yeah Lower exactly don't take so much case. land yes i'm covered in poo and i'm the luckiest man alive but is he gonna the fuck the Charles pig griffin wasn't to be a perfect paradise of pig pageants because unfortunately for him the americans also believed the island was theirs one day in 1854, an American customs collector was sailing around the islands on the outlook for bands of native tribesmen when he spotted something. Aha! I've got you now, you savages. Over yonder. Those are sheep, sir. Sheep, you say? What are they doing here? Let's go and negotiate with them. Ne negotiate with sheep? Are you crazy? I'm perfectly stable, you rat bag. Call me crazy again and I'll Oh my die. god! Uh, hello, good sir. We request to speak with your leader. Out of my way. Allow me to parlay with this foul beast. <clears throat> hey, hey, stop threatening my sheep. Your sheep? You mean to tell me that you, a British subject, have illegally imported these sheep into American territory? I'll have you know that you, an American, are currently trespassing on British territory. <laughs> The Americans felt that they were entitled to collect taxes on the British property, you know, because the island was American. Oh, totally. And they threatened seizure if dues weren't paid. The British, meanwhile, threatened to arrest the Americans, you know, because the island was British. And the two sides were in a standoff. To give Ooh. Charles Griffin the legal power to deal with the American trespassers, Douglas said, hey, put on this wig. Boom. You're a magistrate now. What the fuck and is a magistrate? Griffin went to one of his Hawaiian shepherds and said, hey, I'm making you a constable. Put on this badge. Oh my god. The British then went off to arrest the US customs inspector. But being an American, he emerged from his tent with four pistols and a giant knife. Four pistols? I well I guess remember, switching to your sidearm is faster than reloading. So it makes sense. So the Brits had to back down. Eventually, raids by northern tribes chased the US officer from the island, but the Americans weren't done yet. Officials from nearby Whatcom County in Washington Territory believed the island fell under their jurisdiction, and they decided it was time to make the British pay up once and for all. 
They sent one Sheriff Barnes to go Oh, I love his Charles look. Griffin. Hey, you owe us $80.33 for all this farm stuff you got. How here. much is that go in today's money? Egg. Oh, I see. So that's how it is, huh? That's hmm. how it's going to be, is it? That's the way in which things are, eh? Oh, come on. That be how it will, is it? Will it be how that is, huh? That be the way in which things be the way they are, is it? Get off my property! So the sheriff and other Whatcom County officials felt they were now well within their rights to seize and auction off Griffin's sheep in order hey, to recoup lost taxes. And who would they auction these prized breeding rams off to but themselves? Then, in a pretty chaotic scene, they they, they're the just stealing the rams. Boats. And when Charles Griffin came running to rescue his Charles Griffin has so much heresy. Yeah, he's a. They pulled out he, guns he, on him, you know, he's not he American. Back down. In all, Charles Griffin lost 34 breeding rams. <gasps> and he was furious. The British complained to the American government, who were shocked to hear what had been going on at their northwest border. And both governments told their officials in the area to back off. Why are they both in cars? Is this just to represent that they're super rich? Because <laughs> they didn't, they obviously didn't have cars, but it's just to be like, look how rich they are that they don't give a fuck about this. This is petty. We're not trying to start a major war over some dumb sheep and a stupid island. <gasps> But also, the islands are definitely ours. Under no circumstances let the other side have them. <laughs> For now, both governments agreed to set up yet another boundary commission to decide which channel was the correct border. But it often devolved into petty Yeah, it did say boobies. The, British, the calculator did, did say boobies. Suggestion, though. We could draw the border through this middle channel and split the islands between us. Is he going to do the same joke again of like, oh, that's a, that's a, that's a compromise that would benefit both sides? Well, that would be a yep, here it is. fair compromise that protects the interests of both parties. And there's no way I'm ever going to agree to it! And in the aftermath of the sheep raid, James Douglas, still stationed at Fort Victoria, became even more cautious of American encroachment into his territory. The taxes uh, were roughly 4,000? Holy has shit. discovered gold in the Fraser Canyon, just north of here. <gasps> Shut up! Keep your voice down, boy. We can't risk those globby Americans hearing about this, or our territory here will be infested with them. Uh oh. Oh no. Yeah. yeah! And that's how an American is born. Rush attracted a heap of Americans to the region. Some got lucky. Most did not. Yep. And of those that didn't, rather than returning all the way home, many simply decided to settle in the area. And in particular, the juicy green pastures of San Juan Island were rather appealing. Believing the island was American territory, around a dozen American settlers moved there in the late 1850s. One of them was a man named Lyman Cutler, a young man in his mid-twenties, and lazy as pie. He didn't want to have to clear a space in the Food. forest to build his home, so he said, Eh, I'll just build my cabin right in the middle of this British sheep run. I'm sure that won't make anyone mad. When he planted potato seeds in his garden, rather than building a nice protective fence around them, he said, I'll just fence in three sides and hope all these British farm animals have a moral what? compass and respect my property rights. What? <laughs> I was gonna comment on how stupid that is and then suddenly a pig. Okay, well, that makes sense. Okay. <gasps> Griffin's pig was a Berkshire, well-known for rooting, and Lyman's fairly pathetic fence made for a bad combination. Numerous times he had had to chase the pig away from his property, and he once angrily marched up to Griffin's home, saying, Hey, British farm idiot, keep your stupid pig out of my potatoes. It is up to you to keep your potatoes out of my pig. Griffin was- He really- did- wait, did- potatoes what? out of my pig. He really said that allegedly. I hope he said that. Oh my god. Griffin was furious with his new American neighbors. They Dude, who doesn't like potatoes? I agree passions. with the pig. And besides, what right did they have to be here anyway? It was British territory. Lyman, on the other hand, swore the local government had assured him his land claims were legitimate. And so to him, the British were out of Is line. he fucking the pig? Look at that sick freak. In love with his pig. Isn't that just sick? Yeah. What, what the freak? fuck? Not like our loves, buddy. Ours is all natural. Yep, just a man and his potato. The Nothing fuck? wrong with that. But the tension between Lyman and Griffin was just about to explode. Is that how you make mashed potatoes if you smash a potato? You know what I mean. He's Welsh. They like sheep and pigs. Look, look. I'm not gonna judge them. I'm not gonna judge these cartoonish figures. I'm not gonna judge them. 
But uh, why is everyone trying to fuck farm produce? What the? <gasps> Spuddy? No! All right, oh. you damn dirty pig. That's the final straw. Pull the trigger. Lyman shot the pig. <gasps> Good After riddance. taking a second to calm down, he felt bad about murdering Griffin's prized boar. So he went to him and said, Hey man, look, I, I kind of just killed your pig. It, it was eating my potatoes again and I, I don't know. <laughs> oh no! I kind of just killed your pig. Killed your pig. Killed your pig. <laughs> He's so euphoric! You swine! No, no, no! no the I swine killed is that. The one I killed. I'm Lyman. Dude, fair response. Demanded Lyman pay a hundred dollars for the loss of the pig, an outrageous sum at the time. Obviously, Lyman refused, threatening to shoot any more animals that dared enter his property, even threatening to shoot Griffin himself. <gasps> when Griffin complained to James Douglas, He's British so officials mean. went and confronted the pig killer. Again, they insisted he pay up, and if he didn't, Lyman claimed they threatened to arrest him and take him back to Victoria. British oh, no. officials arresting an American on American soil and trying him under British law. Is this now that's controversial? Is this really how this is gonna start? It's a guy who shot another guy's fuck pig that starts a literal war. Please, please tell me there's more to this, because this is going to be the stupidest war that I have ever heard the Americans getting into. And it's a controversy that attracted the attention of an American general in charge of the Department of Oregon, one William S. Harney. This guy, I thought it general said Horney, had a reputation. He's the kind of guy who invades Mexico without orders, wasting valuable resources and creating an embarrassing situation for everyone involved. He's the kind of guy who has one of his own men arrested for writing the wrong header on a report. He's or the kind of guy who finds a dog digging up his yard and then chases it for a mile and a half what just the to fuck? give it a beating. He hated superiors, hated being told what to do, and had been court-martialed four times for disobeying orders. What the fuck? described him as an imbecile. How is he still in the military? An arrogant humbug and a laughingstock. Like I said, General Harney had a reputation. He hated the British and was out for any opportunity to earn personal glory for himself. By some accounts, he even wanted to become president. And so, how the fuck is this guy going to become president? To visit San Juan Island, and he learned of the plight of the I don't know, how do you get court-martialed four times? Of a pig and the British threat to arrest Lyman Cutler, General Harney went into scheme mode. Oh no. Hey yo, Cap <laughs> He just casually puts an iron to his face. Wouldn't that melt your skin? Oh my, and he's using a banana. I didn't even notice that. Oh my God, he looks like he's a hobo. He looks like he's a hobo. Captain Pickett. Yes, sir. Listen carefully. I need you to go pick up some flowers and bring them to my place later. I've got a plan. I flowers. Here I am, sir. What's the plan? Pickett, you and I are going to start a war. That what sounds like mean, a sir? terrible okay, idea. An American man shoots a worthless pig on San Juan Island and the British threaten to arrest him. Outrageous. But we can use it. We get the settlers there to send us a petition. Oh, that phones aren't invented. American That's why they used protection. it. Makes sense. That's when you go with your men and occupy the island. The British will find American troops on an island they consider theirs so offensive, they won't hesitate to blow you to smithereens. Then um. it's war. We bring in reinforcements and we fight back. I'll write to Washington, D.C., letting them know what's happening. But here's the kicker. My letter will take six whole weeks to get there. Before the government even gets a chance to respond, telling me I'm an idiot and ordering me to cease fire, the island will be ours. Hell, we could what? even invade Vancouver Island or British Columbia. It's foolproof. What? Okay, I see some initial flaws. One, Pickett, you're literally going to be sacrificed, potentially. Uh, two, 
How do you expect to just do an entire war on your own? And three, if you have to make a plan that involves you just delaying someone telling you it's a stupid idea, maybe, just maybe, it's a stupid idea. Where have you heard Piggott's name before? Maybe it's from this guy. Oh, very impressive, sir. But I gotta ask, why? Well, I'll level with you, Pickett. Historians still contest exactly what it is I'm trying to do here. It's possible I'm trying to expand America's territory. Maybe I'm trying to play the hero so I can become president. Some have even suggested that since I'm a slave-owning Southerner, I may be trying to create a diversion to help the South secede in the upcoming Civil what? War. But if there's one thing that almost everyone can agree on, it's that I'm an idiot. I see. But hold on. What you tell me to bring flowers for? Because, Pickett. They're pretty and I like them! There are also historians who believe that Harney and Pickett had no secret plan- Nor Normalize buying men flowers, okay? Brilliant plan worthy of a man who would be present. If it worked, and they got a ton of land, I bet you'd be right. But, uh... Ah... Uh, I, I don't think this is gonna work out because I don't think we own Canada. And at all, and we're not scheming masterminds, but simply hot-headed buffoons, genuinely outraged at the audacity of the British and trying to protect American citizens. But the fact of the matter is, Pickett took the very controversial and extremely provocative act of landing American troops on disputed territory. He set up his camp in a very exposed position and erected a very provocative sign proclaiming that only American laws applied on the island. It was almost like he was asking to be fired upon. Dude, he look, look at what he's dressed like. Look, look, at, look at his attire right here. This guy, they are just asking to be attacked. I mean, did you see what they were wearing? They're just begging for some British to come around and pound their asses into dust. With cannons. With cannons, obviously. Don't take it the other way. Again, maybe he was just an idiot. When a British official sent to the island to get rid of the unruly American settlers now saw that there were American troops, he demanded they leave. He was obviously told to go suck an egg. When Douglas found out, he was enraged. To him, the American landing constituted an invasion. Harney sent a report back to the War Department in DC, justifying his actions yeah, yeah, with, with their cannons. claims of British villainy. But he knew it would take six weeks to get there, and another six weeks for their reply to come back. For now, the situation was entirely in the hands of local military and government officials, and the ball was in the British court. Would the temperamental Governor Douglas and the powerful British Navy respond to the American provocation with force? Were Britain and America really about to go to war over the shooting of a pig? I please well, know. If one man were to have his way, it's entirely possible they would. James Douglas had already had Americans force him out of Oregon. They had threatened his position in Victoria during the gold rush. Now they had invaded his island, and he had had it. It was time to turn to the Royal Navy. You, Captain Hornby, go to the <laughs> island and prevent any more Americans from landing, and take this magistrate with you to arrest Captain Pickett. Use force if necessary. Just don't do anything to start a war. Wait, you want me to use force, but not start Yeah, wait, a how war? does that work? Oh, I'm sorry. Is that too much to ask, princess? When Captain Hornby got to the island and saw that the American force there was even larger than expected, his concern grew. He sent word back to Douglas, who in response ordered even more ships to the island. And at this point, the this is just a giant like, dick measuring hey, contest. Let's talk. They were concerned Douglas's escalation was leading them to war, and they convinced him it probably wasn't a terribly good idea to just go up to an American military captain with his armed men and say, hey bucko, you're under arrest. Please don't shoot me. Douglas gave in. To prevent any hostilities, he canceled all orders and told the Navy, for now, to simply keep an eye on the Americans. Yeah, makes sense. send one more ship for good measure. Captain Pickett, now seeing the British ships with their guns aimed directly at his exposed camp, said, See, Jeff? Look at that. We're about to get blown to bits. All according to plan. This is a stupid idea. Oh crap, Jeff, we're about to get blown to bits! Run! Pickett hastily moved his camp from its very exposed position to another position, which, as it happened, was also very exposed. It probably won't surprise you to learn Pickett came dead last in his graduating class. Wow. Nearby American and British officials began showing up to ask Pickett what the heck he was even doing. Then, a bunch of tourists showed up, because a major war breaking what? out in their doorstep was the single most exciting thing to ever happen in any of their miserable frontier lives.
when when did that stop because if i'm not mistaken didn't people do that in the civil war too where oh look the north and south they're starting the fight and then there would be non-fighting southerners or northerners that would pull out a picnic blanket and a picnic basket and just be like ooh let's watch our sons and fathers and brothers die why would they when did that stop did they do that in world war 1 the, the reason i ask is because wasn't world war 1 also a war where people were like oh yeah just go off and join the war it'll be a quick war you'll get some glory i mean it'll be over in like a week did people do that then at the beginning or not it was a common pastime at least during many during many mexican wars as well what the f why people die horribly i don't understand the appeal world war ii was sort of the last major time stuff like that happened okay that makes sense that makes sense one charles griffin was particularly unhappy first his pig had been shot now his sheep pastures were being trampled by soldiers and tourists alike. He complained to Governor Douglas, who was <laughs> never seen a sheep. upset about the whole thing. Douglas felt British honor itself was at stake. So he decided that if American forces were allowed to be on the island, well then by golly, the British should be there too. It would Damn be a red joint coats. military occupation. Upon hearing Douglas's new plan to land British troops on the island, Captain Hornby decided to go speak with Pickett in person. After Smart. informing him of the plan, Pickett replied that if they dared land, he would open fire. So there they were. The British had orders to land. The Americans had orders to prevent their landing. This was it. War. Over a small island in the middle of nowhere. Over a pig. And some potatoes. Over whether the US-Canada border looked like this. Or like this. <laughs> it was stupid. Hold on. This is stupid. To heck with it. I'm not landing those troops. I'm not going to be the one who starts a war. Smart. The captain decided not to follow What Douglas a beautiful order. smart the man. He didn't because pretty soon after that, the leading British admiral in the entire Pacific region showed up. Rear Admiral Baines, <laughs> Rear. Governor Douglas. When he heard of everything that had been going on, he was stunned. But when he heard that Hornby had refused Douglas's plan to land troops, Baines could have kissed him whether he did or not history doesn't tell oh i but think I they like kissed think they did i the think they kissed i agree douglas's orders and instead pursued a policy of not interfering with the americans until he could contact the british government the americans not knowing the british no longer intended to land had sent reinforcements and began fortifying but even still the british navy did nothing and finally no, it's not gay to kiss your homies Look, always kiss your homies goodnight. Crisis, it's not gay. Everyone was shocked. Holy crap. Harney landed troops on disputed territory? Man, I hope the British don't find out about this. Buchanan? Oh crap, the British! Why are we getting reports of American troops on San Juan Island? Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know, man. Nothing to do with me. But you're the president. <laughs> what? Breckenridge? Am I the president? Yes, sir. And hey, we, we got a problem. Looks like the southern states are considering seceding, uh -oh. and we're headed for the biggest crisis in the uh -oh. history of the nation. And it's your job to fix it, sir. Uh, sir? Oh no. Go away. Not the curtain again, Mr. President. I'm I don't know anything about Buchanan. Welcome, Wolf. Welcome, welcome. I don't know anything about Buchanan. I completely forgot that he was a president. I'm gonna guess he- okay, yeah, I'm gonna guess he was a weak president from there. We're, we're watching, we're watching some history, Wolf. I'm not here. Buchanan. <laughs> Back in the Pacific Northwest, <laughs> Harney was beginning to realize the government may not be terribly impressed with his reckless actions. So he began firing off even more aggressive letters, justifying what he had done. Tell him the British were sending bands of Indians to attack our men, and that they're big meanies with coal for hearts, and that they made me cry like a little girl. Wait, no, that makes me sound weak. They made me cry like a big girl. Yeah, that's <laughs> when the president received Harney's new letters. His oh no, he's only hiding. Oh crap. Hey, General Scott, please make Holy this go shit, away. Holy shit, that's a big Leave man. Sir, General Winfield Scott was the commanding general of the entire US Army. Well known for his negotiation skills, he was a veteran of the Mexican-American War, during which time he had had to deal with General Harney's idiocy and insubordination. And he watched as Harney got away with it all, thanks to his friends in high places.
Oh my god. Okay, just real quick. I know this guy did he did a lot of bad stuff, but just for the craziness of this guy, Andrew Jackson is one of my all-time favorite all-time favorite presidents. Not because of the policies that he did, but because of the craziness of all of his other actions. He had an assassination attempt made on him when the guns wouldn't fire. He saw the guy who tried to shoot him and he beat him to near death with his cane. All the while, this man had so many broken bones from dueling that they called him bag o marbles because you could hear his bones rattle when he started walking. This guy is an absolute legend, and I love him for it. Now, policies, I think he was a racist and he did some bad stuff to the Native Americans, but you know, I'm not saying that was good. But for the crazy factor, this, I think he, he killed the most number of people directly by his own hands during his presidency more than any other president. I think he held the craziest election party that he had to literally tell everyone to get the fuck out of the White House. It was so good. Did they not heal or something? No. He was in constant pain. He had bullets in his body for years because they couldn't take it out. He was in constant pain for most of his life. He's a crazy man and I love him for it. L look up Andrew Jackson if you don't know. It's safe to say that Scott really did not like General Harney. By now? General Scott was racked with gout, and he was so big, he had to be hoisted onto what a ship in a basket. What the fuck is gout? Nevertheless, he began the long journey. Who would win, Pacific Jackson or Clay? West. Jackson. Okay. Jackson, Everyone, you couldn't beat him. Get over here. Will somebody please tell me what the heck is going on? I'll tell you, General. It all started on one fateful day last summer. <gasps> Spuddy? All right, you damn dirty pig. That's the final straw. What? Hey, you can't get away from me! The fuck? Uh, look at that pig. Nowhere left to run. I mean, he eh? literally could run other ways, other enjoy places. Enjoy this. Simon. What the fuck? If you spare my life, I grant you three wishes. The fuck? <laughs> Historically accurate. Historically accurate. So you see, General, the pig wasn't even on his property when he shot it. Liar! He's lying. Was that actually General. that wasn't was I'll that Morgan Freeman? What really happened? Oh, was that AI? <sighs> what a pleasant summer's afternoon here on my humble farm. It's just me and my beloved potatoes. I'm so happy. Say, Lyman, them some <laughs> nice spuds you got there. It's Would animal farm pig. It's animal farm pig. Eat them. No. Not again, you beast! Leave my potatoes alone! Yeah, I'm gonna eat them, Lyman. I'll eat them. And then, I'm gonna eat you. Stay back! I'll shoot! Go ahead, punk. Make my day. Shoot me! Shoot me! <laughs> he made me do it! <laughs> he made me do it! So you're telling me you guys nearly started a war with the strongest naval power in the world. Over For now. For now. We'll beat them soon. For the shooting of a pig? Yeah. Yeah, now he's starting to get it. Not only the pig, sir. The British then threatened to arrest this poor, pure American soul. Thank you, General. Shut up. I don't care about you. Okay. I've made up my mind. <clears throat> You're an idiot. 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 You guys are fine. Yeah. And you two are the most mind-numbingly brain-dead ding-dongs I've ever encountered in all my life, and I'll see you in my office. Okay, Harney, listen. I cut a deal with the Brits. Here's how it's going to be. Both sides will maintain a small force on the island for a joint military occupation until our two governments can decide who owns the island. Now, the only way they'd agree to that is if Pickett is removed from command. So I'm replacing him with Captain Hunt yeah, here. Yeah, fuck Pickett. Now, Harney... Listen to me. Do not, under any circumstances, uh -oh. put Pickett back on that island. He's gonna okay? do it, isn't he? I mean it, Harney. He's gonna do, do it. Not order Pickett back onto the island. Understood? He's gonna do yes, it. Sir. Good. I'll see you, Glubbos, later. Is he gone? I think so. Good. Oh, Hunt, no. He's, he's not gone. Pickett, 
You're going back on the island. <laughs> All right, you psychopath. I've been waiting years. For oh this. my god. I hate you. Oh, <laughs> had not only ordered Pickett back onto the island, but his department even notified the British that it did not recognize the joint occupation settlement, while everyone else had decided on peace. Harney appeared to still be threatening war. Oh my Needless god, say, just fucking throw him in the ocean. Scott soon removed him from command and sent him elsewhere. In Harney's absence, the joint occupation went ahead, and the troops actually got along together nice. quite well. The British attended 4th of July celebrations at Aww. the American camp, while the Americans visited the British for Queen Victoria's birthday. That's so wholesome! Oh, I love that! I love it when two nations can get along and share their cultures with each other. It's so nice. Like, you know, you always get told, like, with wars, it's like, oh, you two, go fight each other. But then, you know, you know, sometimes you just got to sit down and get to know each other. And you see that you aren't too different in ways that matter. Aw. Aw. It's so sweet. It's so sweet. Even oh, sorry, chat killer. I can't go back. With his British counterpart. War. Aren't Brits and Yanks basically the same thing? In a lot of ways, yeah. We speak the same language. We have a lot of common ancestry. You know, we, we look very similar in terms of just, you know, with people. It, it makes sense. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, things that are the same between them. We have the same slang. I was meaning by attire. We look very similar because we all dress very similar. I think, maybe? I don't think we changed much, but you know what I mean. It seemed had been avoided. Thanks largely to the level-headed actions of the Royal Navy and General Winfield Scott. Of course, the islands were still in dispute, and the question of who exactly owned them still had to be answered. That answer would have to wait, because while San Juan was at peace, the nation was tearing itself apart. When civil war broke out in 1861, the issue of San Juan... British has a unique accent. I, am I incorrect in saying that the, the British accent that people think of, wasn't it literally invented? Like, and I don't mean like, all accents were invented. I mean, it, it didn't come about naturally. Didn't the posh British accent get created to make it sound like they were better than other people? It was taught like you would go to a very rich private school and they would teach you this posh British accent. To make it so that this is how you need to sound so that people know that you are rich. Uh, or like, uh, yeah, they're Scottish, there's all this, but they perfectly changed to distance themselves from America. That's what I thought. Okay. So, and it's not all British. There's a bunch of different accents within the British Empire at the time, and even today within the UK. I'm talking about that distinct, stereotypical, posh British one. It was, it originated in literally trying to distance themselves from the other accents. One, just wasn't that important. Harney, despite being a southerner, remained in the U.S. Army, but was eventually removed from command at St. Louis when his loyalty to the Union came under suspicion. Mm, More famously, that's fair. Captain Pickett, a native Virginian, a went on wall. to become a Confederate general. Pickett's charge at the Battle of Gettysburg remains one of the most famous moments of the entire wasn't, war. And marked wasn't that the bloodiest moment within the Civil War, or am I getting it mixed up? What wasn't if I'm not mistaken, if it's if it's the charge that I'm thinking of, it was so bad and so bloody that the northerners like literally stopped firing at one point to tend to the southern wounded because there was just like, hold, just like stop. They're already dead. Like, gosh, stop it. Or am I thinking of another charge? I could be wrong. Like, it was bad if I'm remembering my history class correctly. The major turning point. U.S. relations with I could be getting the charges mixed up. I know that what I said did British, happen. It might not have been Pickett's charge. Correct me if I'm like wrong. They may intervene on the side of the Confederacy. There was the Trent Affair when Confederate diplomats were discovered and arrested on a British mail steamer. And then there were the British built ships sold to barely the accurate. OK, cool. Havoc on Northern commerce. When the Civil War ended, furious American politicians called on the British to pay reparations. And Ooh. by now, a long list of hot issues existed between them. And yes, on that list remained, 12 years later, still the issue of who owned these gosh darn islands. That issue, it was finally agreed, would be submitted to international arbitration. Nice. The Empire of Germany. Would there were so many people who died the during the Civil Americans War. Oh, yeah. Presenting arguments. The American argument was reportedly presented with a little more pizzazz. 
a nice. little more zing. And in the end, when the Germans made their decision, they awarded the San Juan Islands to the yeah. United States. Oh, he did it! When an he did it again. Douglas heard the news, he said that there was no possible way the British argument had been presented correctly. But that was that. The British conceded. And on the 25th of November, 1872, the last British troops left the island. I would really like to hear what the argument was. How do you convince the, the international whatever, the, the court or whatever it's called, that no, 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 give those islands to me. What, what, what could they do? I would, I would be <laughs> yippee. No, he didn't say yippee. He said yeehaw. He said yeehaw. As the Americans entered the British camp to raise their flag, they found that the British had removed the flagpole. One last <laughs> up yours to Uncle Sam. By this time, Charles Griffin had already left the island, and the Hudson's Bay Company eventually sold their sheep farm. And so, there you have it. A dangerous situation that almost brought two great powers to war, triggered by the shooting of a pig. But thanks to more level-headed minds and an eagerness for peace and cooperation, Conflict was avoided, and the only casualty of this pig war was, well, just a pig. But what do you mean, just a pig? Things have been. What if the that British was no pig? That was no just a pig. What he was a member of that man's troops. family. Could the two sides have actually gone to war? Could America have invaded Canada? <gasps> Could it, perhaps, still? I hope so. Invade Canada one day. Think about it. Why not? Yeah. We have the manpower. Yeah. We have the arms. Yeah. It's our manifest Wait, can destiny. Canada doesn't have any nuclear weapons? Yeah, that's free real estate. Take all of Canada. Do it. Con Finally, we can connect Alaska to the rest of the U.S. Do it. Come on. Come on. Take Canada, and then we take Mexico, and then we have the entirety of North America. It's what we need. It's what we deserve. It's God's plan for his American people. This is why everyone knows that Jesus was American. And it's what he wanted from us. It's what he wanted us as Americans to take by our birthright. You know, or something like Picture that. Picture a future where American Mounties wear red, white, and blue. And hail the stars and stripes. Where Wayne Gretzky would wave the American the flag fuck? every 4th of July in the streets of Montreal. Maple USA? Bread, the greatest American food. Banff, the greatest American national park. One united nation under the leadership of our glorious president. Drake, no longer shall we talk no. smug no. to the north with their affordable insulin and endless comments complaining that I don't talk about Canada enough in my videos. That's right, Canadians. Watch your backs. Yeah. Sleep with one eye open tonight because Biden's coming, baby. <laughs> and this time, he's coming with a vengeance. Dark Brandon. Dark Brandon. That was good, but we should do it. We should do that. We should totally do that. Like, I'm not even joking. We should just take all of Canada. I, I'm down for it. Can we please take Canada? I, I want their maple syrup. I, it, wait. I don't want the moose. I, I don't want the moose. Okay, no, no, no. You guys, you, never mind. I take it back. I take it back. I don't want Canada. They have moose. I don't want them. I don't want all the meeses. And that's a bad idea. Never mind. You, you guys can stay. It's fine. You, can, you guys can, te can keep the giant flesh tanks on four legs. That's fine. I don't want moose. That's bad. Never mind. But uh, this was fun. This was enjoyable. Thank you for watching. Uh, you know, leave any other recommendations in the comments section and uh, maybe consider joining the Discord or maybe coming by the stream live if you want. We also do games and we do other stuff. It's a fun time. But until next time, I hope you all on YouTube have a wonderful rest of the day. Bye-bye.